So let's briefly talk about a process known as centrifugation. So what exactly is a centrifuge? A centrifuge is an instrument that is used to separate materials found inside a test tube using very high rotational speeds that are caused by very high radial acceleration values. So let's suppose we take a test tube. Inside the test tube we have a certain particle that we want to separate. So we place it inside our rotor and we allow our centrifuge to rotate. So what happens is, as our test tube rotates, the particle inside the test tube begins to move and it travels further down the test tube. So at point A it's found here and at point B it's found further down the test tube. So what exactly causes, what creates this motion? Well, the particle will tend to move in a straight line at any given point. In other words, at point A, our particle tends to move this way. At point B, our particle tends to move this way. Now, but the fluid inside our test tube in which our particle is found in will resist this motion creating a force known as centripetal force and this force points towards the center of our, our rotor, towards the center of our centrifuge. So our particle tends to move in a straight line, but this force known as the centripetal force created by the fluid forces our particle to move in a straight line. So let's label this force. Let's say we're at point A and our centripetal force points along the positive direction along our x-axis. Now, at the same time, according to Newton's third law, the particle itself will exert a force on the fluid, and that force will point in this direction. Our force will point in the direction that is in opposite of the first force. Now, note that our centripetal force does not exactly equal this force. It does not exactly equal mass times V squared divided by R. So because of this slight discrepancy, our particle will tend to move further down our test tube. So once again, as a result of this discrepancy in force, the particle moves to the bottom of our test tube. So let's look at the following example. A centrifuge rotates at 60,000 revolutions per minute, RPMs. A particle at the top of a test tube that is found 0.07 meters from the center of our rotation. Now we want to calculate the radial acceleration of our particle. So first we must take this RPM value and convert it to revolutions per second to get the frequency. So 60,000 revolutions per minute multiplied by one minute in 60 seconds, we cross out the minutes and we find that our frequency is a thousand seconds to the minus one. Now, we use the formula for velocity to find velocity, so two times pi times our radius, this distance 0.07 meters, multiplied by the frequency and we get approximately 440 meters per second. And finally, we calculate our magnitude of radial, of centripetal acceleration of the particle. So we square the velocity, so 440 squared, divide that by our radius, 0.07 meters, and we get 2,765,714 meters per second squared. So this is our radial acceleration, and we can see that it's a very, very high value, much higher than the acceleration due to gravity.